Hello everybody and welcome to part 7 of our Kiwi Basics with Python tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be talking about is getting mouse input information. And Actually when I say mouse, it's actually not just the mouse, it's any um, coordinate input so to speak. So if you have a phone and you're touching the phone, this would include that kind of input. So again, that's kind of the point of Kiwi is that we can have actually multiple input uh, to a device, but anyways, uh, that's what we're going to cover now is how to get, you know, what's, where are the coordinates that are being actually, I don't know, input or clicked or, I don't know what you would touched, because that's literally what it's being called is a touch, so I guess that's probably the best thing to do. So we're going to be touching stuff, okay, so now, uh, this is where we left off, we had this nice little application, and that's cool, uh, we can work with that. Uh, a little bit more later in buttons and all that, but for now we're going to again kind of break this down to a really simple element so you can see at the most basic level uh, what's involved in getting a mouse you know, input or a finger input or whatever. So uh, we're going to delete this. We don't really actually, I'm not going to delete that. I'm going to just rename it basically, but from kv.uix.widget now we're going to import just widget again. We'll use that for now. And now we need a new class, so we're going to say class. Uh, we're going to call this class touch, touch input, and it's just going to inherit from uh, widget. And then we'll do colon. And now we're going to define def um, on underscore touch underscore down, and then self just for typical standards there, and then touch. Okay. So then, colon. Now let's just print the touch. Now this on touchdown is Kiwi code. Okay, so let me bring this up over. So here we go. Input management. Okay, so if you go to kiwi.org, then go to docs guide, and we come down to input management here. You can see these are basically all of the things that you have at your disposal on touchdown, on touch move, on touch up which basically means a release right so you can hold your mouse key down and then you can you know let it go <laughs> so you've got those or you can you know touch the screen and stop touching the screen and so on anyway this on touchdown for example is uh, kind of like part of you know Kiwi almost so anyway on touchdown self touch moving over uh, what we're gonna do now is we're just printing the touch so that's easy enough Instead of having simple kv4 return float layout, however, we're going to have it return touch input. And that should really be it as far as adding touch input is concerned. Now we should see it printed out to our console. Uh, so here is our kv application. Here is our console. Let's make some clicks. Okay, so as you can see, as we click, we get uh, various uh, elements here for the uh, position. Okay. And uh, so let's click right, right here, for example. So if we click right here, we get a couple of things, right? We get basically the, um, you know, where, so here, and then let's click, uh, let's see, this would be zero, zero here. Let's click here. Okay. So remember what I was talking about before uh, with using X and Y and zero is nothingness and one is fullness. So as you can see, we clicked right at the bottom left corner and pretty close to zero elements. Then we click kind of towards the top right there, almost a one, one. So you get that information, plus you get the actual X and Y coordinate information. So this is a little more relative. So if you're expecting that you're going to be using a lot of different sizes and you want more of the relative because you might be using a float layout, for example, this might be the superior method to use because position might change and then you would have to input all kind, I don't know, some sort of algorithm to calculate what are the new dimensions or where might the new, uh, I don't know, thing that the person's possibly clicking be and are we, because a lot of it is, a lot of what goes on in game development and GUI development is where is the user clicking and are they actually clicking on something or especially in a game, has there been a collision or have we actually shot the person or whatever. Um, so it, for, to have this is actually quite nice because it's more of a relative positioning, not an actual hard static X and Y. Anyway, uh, that's that. Um, I'm actually going to, well, I, I can fit in the other one too. So, so another thing that you might want to have is you might want to have just general mouse position, but a, 
Probably not, and, and also the reason why that's not really useful for Kiwi is the idea of Kiwi is to be um, a, you know, all kinds of applications. So in theory with Kiwi, uh, to work on a phone, you can't really have a mouse, like just general mouse position on a phone. Like the only way you would possibly do that is by using your phone in like in touch down and then move, right? Otherwise you can't move a mouse. Uh, so the same thing is true uh, over here. So the only, so the next thing you would really want to track is after a touchdown, where is the movement? And then obviously you would want to track maybe a touch up movement. So for example, let's, um, let's just close out of this. And so we've got on touchdown. Now we can do define um, on underscore touch underscore move. Again, it's just self touch colon print touch. Okay, so basically the same uh, parameters. And then uh, I believe the other one is just touch up. So I was going to go ahead and just add that one as well on touch up. Right. So then let's go ahead. Let's just copy this because it's basically all the same. So copy, paste, on touch move. Now on touch up and print. Let's just add here released comma okay save and run that real quick okay so now let me move this down so you can see it whizzing by and so we're holding the mouse now and we're moving around and we can see all those elements and then we release and sure enough we got our released message so this is where the mouse was released in the coordinates and then again the general relative uh, I don't know I'm trying to think of a better better word for it but anyway um, but yeah, so that was where it was released in terms of zero and one. So I suppose for relative or, I don't know, <laughs> or normalized maybe. I'm trying to think of a good word for it. Anyway, uh, so that's how you get like mouse events and stuff like that. And so from here we can actually do quite a few cool stuff. And I, I think my favorite example has always been the paint application. And because it kind of shows off the canvas ability of Kiwi. So Kiwi has a pretty cool canvas ability and we can actually draw on the canvas with our mouse. And since we now have uh, what's required to track when the mouse is pressed, when the mouse moves, and where that mouse moves, like literally every movement is being tracked here, where the mouse moves, and then when it's done moving, we have all of that. So moving and creating some sort of uh, paint application or somewhere where we can actually draw, like, you know, high, okay, um, should be relatively simple from here, right? So anyways, uh, that's what we're going to be moving on to in the next video is just creating like a simple application where we can draw stuff um, to the actual screen. So stay tuned for that. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments on this video, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support subscriptions. Until next time.